might get a stagnation. So today, very excited because um, this is something new for me as well, but I want to introduce it to your world too. So please welcome Conrad. Um, he's the director of education technology from Body Bus Fitness. So, you know, um, not only the general fitness over there, like if you want to lose weight or you want to gain weight, like you can hire any trainer. However, but if you got injured and if anyone know, I just had a car accident a few months ago. Um, you still need to work out though if you want to get recover fast and get your body back into action. But how really you can do that in a sustainable way? Today, we're going to answer that question. So thank you, Conrad, to joining Get Unstuck Radio today. Thank you. Yeah. So before we get into um, the details of what we are going to speak today, why are you interested in fitness at the very first place though? Fitness. Uh, so uh, it's an interesting story. I um, I did not start my career uh, in fitness. I started in finance. And mm. I moved to New York from Europe. Uh, I grew up between France and Spain, and I was in London for a year. And I moved to New York uh, in 2008, and it was an uh, economic crisis. And I was working in finance. It was horrible. I did not want to stay there. And but I, I was young, I was in New York, and I thought, let me do something extravagant. And I became an executive assistant to a billionaire. And I was traveling around with him around the world. And he was a billionaire from Venezuela. He was 65 years old. And he traveled with me for his professional stuff, uh, with another personal assistant for his personal things, and with a personal trainer. And the personal trainer only worked one hour in the morning and then maybe went for a walk in the evening with, with the billionaire. And I told him, like, like, do you get a salary? Or like, uh, he's like, yeah, I have a salary just like yours. Uh, but, you know, all the travel is paid for, all the food is paid for. Uh, it, the big difference was that I was working like 12 hour days and he was working one or two hours a day. Ah. And I thought I need to be you. Um, but I was in New York and uh, I thought like, OK, let me research what you need to do to become a personal trainer. It had never been on my radar. I had always played basketball and so on. But I knew that I always wanted to help people. And I had not found exactly the job to do that. Like I was always in customer service type uh, positions. But when when personal trainer uh, came to my to my radar, I thought, OK, this is where I want to be. And I wanted to be also in a career where there was no ceiling to how much you could learn. And so I, I made the switch. I became a personal trainer. And like most personal trainers, I started at a gym. But then at the beginning, the very beginning of my career, I find out that I felt like I could only train healthy people. And that's what they, when you get a certification, they teach you like, this is how you train these reps, these sets, blah, blah, blah. But then I started encountering uh, like someone that was injured, someone that was obese, someone that had diabetes. And I wanted to be able to help all these uh, populations. And so I got as much education as I could at the very beginning of my career. And then I became the only trainer in these gyms that, could actually train these people. Like the manager would just give me the clients because he's like, this is, you're the only trainer that has the education to train someone with injury, someone with uh, back pain, someone with knee pain. And so they would just hand me clients. And so I made myself a niche without really like thinking too much about it. Mm. And so I got into that niche and I actually preferred it. Like I, I wanted to work with people where I would make the biggest difference. Uh, most trainers can help anybody lose five pounds, get a little stronger. But if you want to lose weight and you're, you're injured, your knee hurts and you have diabetes and you're not getting a lot, enough sleep, now you, you need to get a trainer that's a little more specialized, right? And they have, that also has the education and the patience to problem solve around these uh, circumstances. Yeah. And so that's what I, I made my career out of that. And so I, then I, I became an, an exercise consultant for a diabetes center. It's called the Friedman Diabetes Institute mm. in New York. Um, and, and I kept working with uh, people that special populations, as they call it, in the fitness industry uh, until I stumbled upon EMS, which is electromuscle stimulation. Uh, I stumbled upon it three years ago. Uh, and it, I love EMS from the get-go because it solves a lot of obstacles. The main obstacles around exercise are usually time, uh, motivation, injuries, pains and aches. And EMS solves all of these issues because it's only a 20 minute workout that equates to an hour, an hour and a half of lifting. It's motivational because you always have to do it with a trainer. 
And uh, if you have injuries, if you have pains and aches, uh, the pains and aches, the stimulation actually helps with them. Like this is what they use in physical therapy is a TENS unit, it's called. Uh, ah. And with injuries, even though you may not be able to move a, a joint, whether it's your shoulder, your knee, uh, as long as you're able to contract the muscle, then you're going to get the benefits from it. Oh, so the EMS, the okay. Uh, tell me the feeling would be similar to when I put the tent on, isn't it? Similar in in a way, yes. It's ah. it's the same concept, the same technology, but ah. the settings are different. With tens unit, the the purpose is to either re, um re, relax the muscle or relax the nervous system or both. With EMS and and it's the the EMS stands for electromuscle stimulation, but the full uh, acronym is whole body EMS, mm -hmm. where you wear a suit that covers your entire body, and the settings are different. And where the settings so with whole body EMS, we can we can mimic the settings of tens unit. We can have the same settings to relax the muscle and relax the nervous system, which we usually do at the end of every session. So that it avoids lactic acid build and, and you can recover a little faster. It reduces the risk of soreness. But during the session itself, the settings are higher so that it elicits uh, muscle contraction to the point where uh, you get stronger. Mm, okay, let's show anyone who watched in the YouTube. But some, if you listen from podcasts, you can check in um, bodybusfit.com. So this is how it's going to look like, right? Yeah, so it's a it's a full body suit. It has a vest that goes over over your torso, uh, and it has electrodes on the chest, the abs, and three different electrodes for your whole back. Then it has electrodes on the arms, and then glutes, quads, and hamstrings. So it covers all the major muscle groups. Mm -hmm. So it's a twenty minute workout. In the twenty minutes, we include a warm up. It's typically a, a 15 minute full body workout. And then we end with like a two, three minute recovery at the end. There's also a pain relief program where we can mimic like a tens unit or so to relax the muscle. Uh, wow. It's a lower back pain, for example. But because uh, the main workout is full body, uh, even though we may be doing like a bicep curl, your legs are also on. And so by the end of the 20 minutes, it's as if you had done 15 to 20 minutes of legs, 15 to 20 minutes of abs, 15 to 20 minutes of arms, 15 to 20 minutes of uh, back, chest, right? So it, it equates to an hour, an hour and a half of lifting. And there's actually like research studies comparing one or two sessions of EMS per week for a period of time, like six weeks, to two to three full hour training sessions. And they have very similar results. Yeah. But EMS is much faster and it avoids a lot of these obstacles of time, injuries, pains, aches. Yeah. I'm thinking along. I'm thinking along like when I put the 10 unit on. Um I really like the feeling though, to be very honest. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's really stimulates. Like because I couldn't I couldn't walk right. So background story, anyone. <laughs> um, I had a car injury and I have a hip displacement, and right now I have what do you call it? I have a metal on my hip right now, like this long. Okay, yeah. Yeah, at the back. Yeah, like a plate. Yeah. So um, I just could walk like a month ago and it's been very challenging to since like from absolute flat bait to to be able to sit, yet yeah. to be able to stand and then walk. Um, it's very challenging. And you know, when you rest your muscle that long, you lost your muscle. Like it's yeah, already strapped down. <laughs> Yeah. yeah so my two legs are totally in equal like they uh the physical therapist they're gonna check on every side of the body like all the total body like which part are the weakest and to do like launch only one side um or trying to do um sumo squat on that one to get this muscle with something like that but it's not that easy like i i can tell you <laughs> i couldn't even walk straight <laughs> yeah no and and, and i mean uh, it, it, it is something that affects a lot of people when 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 you, everybody has imbalances but um when one is much weaker, especially after it atrophied and and, and this is how the technology actually started it, it, it so in the u.s the technology has been around for like 30 years or so in physical therapy settings. 
and they used it initially to avoid atrophy, right? Like if someone was bedridden for a while, they would use the TENS unit to, to elicit some activation of the muscle so that you don't completely lose it. Uh, but now it's it's made the jump into the fitness realm where now it's a full body suit and, and now all the muscles are activated and it's higher frequencies. So you elicit muscle development, not just maintaining whatever is there. But uh, I mean, for you, it'd be great because if you feel like you're much stronger on one leg than the other one here with a full body suit, you would get the same simulation on both sides and eventually it will catch up. Right. And mm -hmm. then you can always also uh, uh, emphasize one side by doing single leg exercises. Like if you're doing lunges or single leg deadlifts or so, uh, you are focusing more on one leg, even though the stimulation is on both legs. And so eventually mm -hmm. your second, your other leg is going to catch up. Um, another thing I want to talk to you about, um, and this is so one of my obstacle as well, metabolism. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm I'm switching diet very often, um, especially when I was in a hospital. I was like on a keto and then I have to off the keto and I have to go back to the normal food. Um, I know that kind of ripped off right now, like the metabolism uh, level somehow. Mm -hmm. But for those who injured, especially or like um diabetes even i know this is the big issue because like food actually more important than workout but it has to go together right how how the ems um meanwhile support the muscle part like whole body but also how can the trainer combine these two like with butt fitness yeah so diet is is crucial and crucial in any so for recovery and if, if you're diabetic or so like diet has to be uh emphasized and, and, and you have to pay close attention to it um the main thing with diabetes is insulin resistance right like that's that's the whole cause of it um and it's been proven that uh resistance training so lifting weights improves uh insulin sensitivity meaning that your muscles are able to utilize a little more uh, the insulin. And so then therefore over time, you don't need as much uh, insulin and or medication, right? And if you're type two, if you're type one, you're always gonna use, need insulin. But if you're type two, you can reduce the amount of insulin that you need if your body is able to utilize it more. And the key thing there is resistance training. EMS equates to resistance training. You can also do cardio with EMS and, and it's very effective, but uh, where EMS shines is with uh, e equating it to resistance training and using levels that mimic resistance training. So um, around in, uh, like patients with diabetes, especially if it's uh, they're older, they might have other limitations as well, right? They might not have a, a history or experience working out regularly. Um, so having an appointment, one with a trainer mm, will keep you accountable Two, having EMS that takes a little less time. So it, it's, you're not working out for too long. And then three, it equates to resistance training. So over time, you should be able to maybe reduce, uh, your insulin and, and create more sensitivity around it. Mm. So th that's where the intersection of all these obstacles um, come into play with EMS, where EMS can solve most of these obstacles. Obviously, if you hire a trainer, a trainer will be able to work around injuries, um, but not necessarily address them. And not necessarily, if you're injured in your shoulder, you can't move it, then a trainer is just going to avoid exercises around it unless they have a background in physical therapy or something like that. But uh, with EMS, you can still work out your back, your chest, and as long as you can contract it without, you don't necessarily need to move the joint. Mm, how amazing is that? You have no need to move it. <laughs> you can just do <laughs> like, get some more. Yeah. Um, and, and for those who require a physical therapy, do they still, um, do you still suggest them to carry on the, the, the therapy part? So with the physical with therapy, yeah. we, we don't intervene with physical therapy. So a physical therapist typically will work on regaining mobility, right? Like some, if you're injured, uh, the main point is to first be able to move it and then strengthen the muscles around it so that you don't get injured again. Typically, physical therapists will see you once or twice a week, maybe more, but they'll give you homework to do at home. And, and doing the homework is usually where, where patients will have more or less success because 
They have to do the exercises on a regular basis, but also they have to do them correctly. Um, this is where EMS can help because if you can't move a joint, uh, EMS can still help get all the other muscles and even the muscles around the injured joint stronger. And the stronger you are, so muscles are like the body's natural body arm, they're, they're armor for the body. So the stronger you are, the better off you're gonna be. Um, and so while you're recovering from uh, physical therapy, we would get in touch with the physical therapist, make sure that they say like, okay, nothing, no overhead exercises. Okay, no problem. Uh, we'll still do other exercises that don't, will not injure the person, but we'll get them stronger. What? Um, but sorry. it's not necessarily, uh, sorry. Uh, it, so uh, it's not, EMS is not just for, for people that are injured or so. It's it's a great solution for, for these populations. Uh, but there are instances of athletes using EMS. And one of the fam most famous athletes was Usain Bolt, who uh, was getting injured because his core was not strong enough. And he was flying all the way to Germany to get EMS sessions because EMS was not available in, in the U.S. or, or Jamaica. Mm. And, and so he was flying all the way to Germany to get EMS sessions, get his core stronger, and then fly back and continue his training. I have to ask you about the energy level. So as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur, um, it's so important to balance energy. Like it's not only to balance the mood though, but also to keep it like a bit stable along the time that I'm working. Like right now, this is a part of my work, right? I host a podcast um, and then mm -hmm. towards the whole day. So um, to keep the energy level remains I mean, not as high, but like higher, not like, not, not feeling like after eating and I feel like food coma and I have to go to sleep or something like I can't do that because I'm still working. Yeah. So how EMS help us to um, balance the energy as well. I, I see that on the website. Yeah. So, and you mentioned metabolism and, and I, I want to just uh, do a callback to um, a previous guest. There was a woman's coach and the, it's, it's a podcast that you recently put out. Uh, where she was taught, she coached people about like not just overworking all the time, but mm. like uh, making sure that their relationships were, were healthy, that they were healthy and exercising correctly, right? And like balancing all these things. So EMS here is is a great solution for for the exercise part uh, of that equation because it doesn't take long, right? It takes twenty minutes. The trainer comes to you. That's what what how we serve our clients. We drive to the person's uh, uh, residence or work or wherever they, they want to work out. And we bring all the equipment. So you don't have to invest in any other equipment. Um, you don't need heavy weights with EMS. EMS is the entire stimulation. Um, and, uh, and so that portion makes it very convenient, right? And then in terms of energy, uh, so EMS is just about 20 minutes. Typically after the session, most people don't feel like they've done much. Like it doesn't feel like, oh my God, like a, this was so hard and so long. And like, it, it sort of feels like, wow, I could maybe go for a run now. Um, but, but, but it is actually an intense workout. Mm -hmm. uh, the body perceives it. So it's because all the muscle groups are stimulated at the same time, your central nervous system perceives it as like an intense workout. And typically people feel sore two days after um, so the next day you might feel like, oh, that wasn't that much. And then the next day you start feeling the soreness and you're like, okay, yeah, I really worked out. And my, my experience, uh, at first I was very skeptical. I thought like, oh, this can't be true. Uh, 20 minutes, an hour, like it, it, impossible. And so I, I tried it, uh, for the first time and my glutes. So my butt was as sore as I had ever been for five straight days, <laughs> five straight days where it was just so sore. And I, I'm used to working out and I am used to doing squats and deadlifts and, and being sore for one or two days, maybe three days, but five days was excessive. I think that the trainer that knew I, I was a trainer myself and so wanted to uh, impress me a little bit and, and, and turned it up a little too high, but uh, we don't do this with our clients. But uh, in terms of energy levels, it, it boosts your metabolism. Uh, on the spot, you're going to feel like you're a little more awake. Uh, I have some clients that, that equate it like this is like taking like three shots of, uh, of an espresso because you feel uh. like, <laughs> like your nervous system is, is awake. It's, it's activated. All your muscles have worked. Um, so on the spot, it gives you a, a, a small boost of energy, uh, long-term, just like any type of exercise, 
it helps with energy levels. It helps maintain your metabolism high uh, and, and not have like these like midday crashes or, or um, you know, like wanting to go to sleep or the food coma that you were mentioning. What about sleeping? This is another thing. <laughs> yeah, how it helps. Because like, you know, <laughs> um, many people over here, our listener here, they may like put the word into bed <laughs> and that's not good like yeah. that's not good that you may need more assistance than only exercise but how how the ems also helps with that so uh just like any exercise uh, exercise in general is going to wake you up a little bit and that's why it, it's never like there's always questions around like what time should i work out uh the recommendation is always to work out in the morning there are several reasons for for that it's mostly because if you leave it for the evening you're going to have other plans maybe and then you don't want to interfere with that but um it takes the body about an hour and a half to go come back to homeostasis where where it's like where all your hormone levels and and, and energy levels come back to normal and so if you work out right before bedtime it's going to wake you up and you may it's going to be harder to fall asleep but ems just like an hour an hour and a half of weightlifting or training it's going to tire you out uh and so throughout the day you're and on the moment after the session you're going to feel awake and, and like full of energy uh throughout the day and night you're going to sleep like a baby most of the time because you did an intense workout that's the goal sleep like a baby like that's the that's goal <laughs> ah okay so um Let's let's go back to those who um also like concerned about um building muscle and overweight. Like it works the same, right? Just like more convenient for them. It's more convenient. Uh, EMS does not affect fat tissue directly. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't do anything to the fat tissue, but exercise is part of a big equation for fat loss, right? Um, the main component for for losing weight and fat loss specifically uh is diet then I, and i tend to talk about the big rocks so if you want to lose weight you need to uh, address your exercise regime you need to look at your diet and also sleep is very important it's very important in that equation and so if you're lacking one of the three if you're not sleeping enough you can exercise and eat correctly that mm, you may not get the best results mm -hmm. so all three components have to be there in order to get the most Uh, effective uh, weight loss strategy. Uh, but EMS uh, helps with uh, weight loss long term because the more muscle you build, the more your metabolism is revved up, but also the more muscle you have, the more calories you're going to burn with doing regular daily activities. So the more muscle you have, the more calories you burn. And so that helps with the weight loss equation. Mm. And obviously, uh, the other side, if you want to build up muscle, Uh, EMS can can help you do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's very interesting though. So in case someone interested to give it a try, um, where can they find um, body bus then? Like where can they um, yeah. so get in touch with you we, guys? We, yeah, so we have a website. It's uh, bodybuzzfit.com. And we serve, uh, currently we serve the city of uh, San Diego, Los Angeles on the west side and Las Vegas. So we have trainers in all three cities. So if you want to reach out to us, if you're in one of these uh, three cities, uh, you can go to bodybuzzfit.com, send us a message, and we have a special introductory uh, session for $60. Amazing. So everyone, if you're still listening to now, um, I mean, give it a try. It's very interesting. And I think it's very time perspective that you can just manage yourself around this and it lasts longer. Like you can do this like 20 minutes, uh, two times a week only. Like that's, that's very that's time that's effective. <laughs> um, and in fact, the, the yeah. major research study was comparing one and a half sessions. So one, one week, one session, another week, two sessions, comparing it to working out three times a week for an hour. And the results were equatable. So it's 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 fascinating. It solves a lot of uh, obstacles around exercise and exercising consistently, which is the other portion. Yeah, thank you so much, Conrad, for sharing this amazing um EMS and yeah, but body fitness, as, body bus fitness as well. So anyone check it out. Everything will be in the description. Conrad, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Matilda. Thank you so much, and get better. Get better. Thank you. <laughs>
Hey, thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoy the show, you can subscribe here or here. And this is the previous episode. Check it out. See you next time.